Every year, the Nez Perce tribe gets a share of the salmon raised in Idaho hatcheries to refurbish the rivers around where they live. This year, though, was a significant one because this year they spent hours releasing hatchery fish, the Spring Chinook, into the Sweetwater Creek for the first time in nearly a century. The Sweetwater Creek runs through Lapway and feeds the Sweetwater River. And while it was an exciting day yesterday, tribal members say they would have never been without Chinook in that creek in the first place if it wasn't for the Lewiston Dam. Here's Katya Stepovic. The bells were rung. <laughs> Ceremonies sung by tribe members. <laughs> Shortly after, 200,000 juvenile spring Chinook tagged, tracked, and off they go into Sweetwater Creek. It's a ceremonial happy moment when we stock, stock those streams. But at the same time... It's also sad that, that we're reaching the point where we have to. Since the Lewiston Dam was built on the Clearwater River in 1927, tribe members say the dam did not have adequate fish passages, forcing fish to be pushed upstream of the dam, most of them not surviving. It was man-made, man-made you know, obstructions that had wiped out natural, the natural returning fish and genetics. After the dam was removed in the 1970s, fish were reintroduced through hatchery programs. But wild spring Chinook haven't returned to the creek because of a lack of water and poor habitat. It's kind of a sad, sad state that um, we're relying heavily on, on hatchery fish for spring Chinook. Um, but our intent is to provide hatchery fish for tribal harvest and non-tribal harvest. We're, we're hoping that some of these fish will escape past those harvest opportunities and actually start spawning naturally in the streams. Over the years, the tribe has worked to reconnect the creek to its original floodplain and installed in-stream structures that created cool water flows, which is why this is able to happen. It's important for a number of reasons. They're not only a keystone species for the tribes of the Northwest, we rely heavily on them with our culture, our ceremonies, and it, it's our basic food. Uh, but also they're, they're uh, they're involved in the chain of life, in the, you know, the circle of life. They, they provide nutrients when they die to the stream, to the macroinvertebrates, the bugs, the eagles, the birds. And once you interrupt that and you let that go, then you've impacted the whole, you know, the whole life cycle of other animals. While many Nez Perce tribe members are happy Spring Chinook are back in the waters once again, they mourn the loss of wild, natural Chinook and are not optimistic that they will ever return. To be honest, it's the dams, it just is. And that would be, uh, provide the, the most impact the quickest, um, whether that be, you know, providing a channel around them for fish to come around and not go through turbines and, you know, and go actually through the concrete structure. But that would be the biggest impact we could do right now. All right, now let's talk about sustainability and what the future holds for these fish in this creek. The journey for salmon from the ocean to these rivers is about three to 400 miles. And because of climate change and the presence of dams, some say wild salmon will never return to these creeks and rivers. So hatchery fish will have to be released every so often to keep that population thriving in these areas. But that's going to require more funding from federal agencies, which Keller tells me is a constant struggle right now. Has been for years. And speaking of federal funding and those dams mentioned by Scott Keller, Katya, they've been there for decades. But last year, Idaho Congressman Mike Simpson, he made the bold proposal to get rid of them all in a plan he calls the Columbia Basin Initiative. We could take hours breaking down the benefits and the difficulties in doing that, but it is worth mentioning. Simpson's proposal would require $33.5 billion in federal money to breach those dams by 2030. It would also have to replace the transportation, the irrigation, and the power generated by those dams. Simpson says that funding could come from President Biden's multi-trillion dollar infrastructure package.